Hello, Eleanor. It's Grandma with another story for you today. Do you know what kind of weather we're having in Michigan? It is snowy, very, very snowy, and we wish you could be here to play in the snow. But I wonder if you know what animals do in the winter. Where do they get their food? On a snowy day like this, what happens to the birds and the bears and the deer and the raccoons? What do they do for food? Well, the story I'd like to share with you today is called The Big Snow. It has a lot of animals in it, and we're gonna find out how they, what they do in the winter. So, let's take a look at this book, The Big Snow by Bertha and Elmer Hatter. It was written a long time ago, and some of the pages are even black and white instead of in color. There's the first one. Oh, look at all the animals. The deer, the squirrels, the rabbits. Oh, I see a cardinal. Oh, you're not seeing the pictures, are you? Look at that. A little old man and a little old lady with shovels. And oh, it looks like the snow is up to their chests. That's really deep, isn't it? The big snow. Honk, honk. The wild geese were flying south. The big harvest moon had come and gone. Red and gold were the leaves on the maples and the oaks. And the wind that blew down from the north was cold. Mrs. Cottontail and the littlest rabbit sat on the warm brown earth of the vegetable garden. Far below at the foot of the hill, the broad waters of the river ebbed slowly to the ocean. They stared into the sky at the flock of wild geese. See all the geese flying? Where are they going? It must be fall. You know what that means, said Mrs. Cottontail. The littlest rabbit shook his head. He couldn't speak because of the, his mouth was full of carrot tops. He didn't know why the geese were flying south. This was his first time he had seen, he had seen them. That means that the cold winter days are near and you will be needing a warm coat, said Mrs. Cottontail. Eat plenty of cabbage leaves and carrot tops, and you will have a thick coat for the winter. The littlest rabbit nibbled another tender carrot top. I think he liked that news. He gets to eat some of his favorite foods. The little groundhog, who lived in a den just outside the garden fence, looked up at the wild as the geese flew overhead. He had already put on his warm fur coat. Oh, oh, he said, it's nearly time for my winter nap. When the days grew short and cold, he went to bed and slept soundly until spring. This saved him the trouble of storing up food for the winter. What do you suppose he's eating? Is that some grasses? I think so. Mrs. Chipmunk, with her cheek pouches full of seeds, stopped for a moment beside the little stone house on the hillside. She had worked hard all summer and had stored plenty of seeds and nuts for the winter in her home deep beneath the rock pile. Brrr, she said, it's getting cold. It's time for me to retire. Oh my. I wonder what retire means. Does that mean like grandma and grandpa are retired? Stop working or, oh, I'll bet she's gonna sleep for the winter. A blue jay perched on the topmost bough of the sycamore tree. He looked at the geese flying in the sky high above the, the river. Well, well, it's later than I thought. He flew to the big pine tree where the cardinal was, was resting. Aren't you going south, he asked. No, indeed, replied the cardinals. We can find plenty to eat here. We like winter. 
song sparrows chirped happily on the hillside. They paid no attention to the geese in the sky, for they did not mind the cold weather. They knew that the meadow grasses were heavy with seed, and so were the birches and the ash trees. A little bird, a bluebird sat on the roof of his house, built of cedar. He looked at the fat robin on the lawn below. It's high time to go south, he called. Not me, said the rabbit, robin. He tugged and pulled at a fat worm out of the ground. I'm staying here this winter. Oh dear, I don't think he'll be able to find worms this winter. Do you, Eleanor? High on the hill, a brown wood rat stopped to look at the geese. Hey, hey, he squeaked. There they go. He knew cold weather was coming. And he had carried seeds and nuts to his nest under the big rock. The red-winged red -winged pheasants roaming through the woodland only stared at him. They never thought of leaving their home for the south. There was plenty of food for them on the on the hill, and they didn't mind the cold. So there are the pheasants. They're going to stick around and find food to eat. Car, 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 croaked the black crows in the cornfield as the geese flew by. They knew where to find food during the long winter months, and they never went south. Every day during the harvest season, the red squirrels and the gray squirrels had been busy storing nuts and acorns and seeds under the leaves and logs where they hoped to find them during the winter, during the lean winter months. Their fur coats were thick and warm. They were ready for winter. And in Michigan, we have black squirrels. Oh, goodness, the, when we first moved here, that surprised me. I was used to gray squirrels in Chicago. The pretty white-footed wood mouse flicked his long tail as he looked at the geese flying high in the sky. He knew that winter was coming, but he had worked hard and had a good supply of seeds stored away in his underground nest. He wouldn't be hungry in the months to come. The short-tailed meadow mouse didn't bother to look for at the geese. Winter held no terrors for him. The tunnels made by the mole led to sweet plant roots and the tulip bulbs in the garden. He would have plenty to eat. Oh, goodness. I didn't know he went underneath the garden to eat the bulbs and stuff. Maybe that's why some of my tulips don't come up in the spring. Ooh, look at the deer. The shy white-tailed deer browsed in the woods that covered the ridge at the top of the hill. Their coats were already thick and warm. Some of the deer saw the flying geese, but they never thought of leaving their woodland, woodland home where there was food for all growing so plentifully. Ah, what have we got here? Uh, and there were hill dwellers who came out to hunt for the food at night. The skunk family who lived under the woodpile didn't care which way the geese were flying. They were happy and content on the hillside. There was plenty of food to be found if one only followed one's nose and they could sleep through the coldest winter months in their bed of leaves and soft grasses. Ha! The raccoons followed their path through the woods. They too knew that winter was coming. When the deep snow covered the land, they would climb into their soft bed in the hollow trunk in the old willow and sleep until the cold days passed.
The days grew shorter and shorter, and then the first snow blew down from the north. When the round winter moon bathed the hillside in silvery light, the mice and the rabbits came out of, to dance and frolic. The skunks and raccoons and the deer left well-marked trails in the early winter snow. And then the night after Christmas, there was a rainbow around the moon. The wise owls knew what that meant. More snow, much more. Hoo, hoo. The sad trilling call of the screech owl was heard up and down and across the hillside. The owls were right. Soft gray clouds quickly filled the sky and blotted out the moon. The beautiful, a beautiful snowflake fell through the air. There it is. And then two, followed by three, and then four. <laughs> the snowflakes fell faster and faster and faster. Millions of snowflakes fell from the sky. It snowed all that night and all the next day. Thick snow covered the branches of all the trees. Wow. A blanket of snow covered the meadows, the hills, the valleys. The snow was heavy on the roofs of the houses and barns. Snow, snow everywhere. Isn't it beautiful? Wow, and all over the tree branches. Oh goodness, but what are the animals gonna do for food? The snow stopped falling on the evening of the second day. Once again, the big silvery moon rose high in the sky. The owls winged noiselessly from the sycamore to the pine. Nothing else stirred in the silent snow-covered land, and then the skunk family dug their way up from their den buried so deep under the snow. They sniffed and sniffed, but all their sharp noses smelled was snow, so they crawled back to sleep again in their soft den. The raccoons scraped the snow away from the entrance to their home in the willow. They stared in wonder at the snow, and then they hurried back to sleep until spring in their soft, warm beds. <laughs> so the skunks and the raccoons went back to bed to sleep. At dawn, the jays shook their feathers and left their, their shelter of their big spruce. The sparrows, the chickadees, the cardinals, and a lonely robin scrambled out from under their shelters. From under their shelter and flew from tree to tree trying to find a place to perch on the heavy snow-laden branches. They looked in vain for the seed grasses in the meadow. The ice and snow covered everything, even the seeds of the birches and ash trees. The jays and the crows took wing to hunt for food the jays flew north in great circles, and the crows flapped slowly south. Oh, dear. They're even having trouble finding places to perch on the trees. There's just so much snow everywhere. The deer huddled together in the deep woods. Drifts of snow covered the bushes and grasses that furnished them with food. The deer were hungry. Mrs. Cottontail and the little rabbits were hungry too. They came out from their nests underground to hunt for food. Oh dear, all the food is covered up with the heavy snow. Snow, snow, nothing but snow, and the birds and the animals of the hill were very hungry. Then the sun rose above the hills Clear and bright, the sharp eyes of the jay saw a little old man in a bright red cap come out of the stone house. 
he slowly shoveled a path through the deep snow. There he is, shoveling a path. He was followed by a little old woman dressed all in green. She scattered seeds and nuts and breadcrumbs to right and to left, all along the path, scattering seeds and nuts and breadcrumbs. The cry of the blue jay echoed over the hillside. Food, 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 they cried again and again. All the birds on the hill heard the happy call. Caw, 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 croaked the crows when they saw the little woman put pans of food in the back of the house and the little old man drag hay from the shed and scatter corn on the snow. Food, 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 they called, and their cries were heard by the deer in the woodland away at the top of the hill. The squirrels heard them too and raced through the treetops. Snow covered their hidden stores of nuts and acorns and they were hungry. The skunk family and the raccoons, deep in their long winter sleep, did not hear the crow's call. In her warm burrow under the woodpile, the chipmunk opened a sleepy eye and ate a few peanuts and then she closed her eyes again to dream of the spring days to come. <laughs> she didn't bother getting up, did she? All the other animals hurried as fast as they could through the snow to the little stone house. Ah. The cardinals, the sparrows, the chickadees, the lonely robin flew to the banquet chirping and singing. The hungry pheasants in the woods heard the glad tidings and joined the happy throng. Wow, look at all the animals coming to the feast. The groundhog didn't wake up until the second day of February. He pushed up through the snow and looked about. The sun was shining brightly and there on the snow, the groundhog saw his shadow. Uh-oh, I know what that means, he said. There will be six more weeks of winter, and he hurried back to his den to sleep until spring. The groundhog was right. It was a long, cold winter for the birds and animals on the hill, but the little old man and the little old woman put out food for them, until the warm spring came, and that was the end of the big snow. Did you like that story? Oh, there were lots of animals in this book, weren't there? And I think we learned a few things about what the animals do in the winter. And now I'm gonna show you what this little old man at our house did. Oh goodness, can you see? Can you see the bird feeder out there? Look at all the birds flying to the bird feeder. They're so hungry. Look at all of our snow. It's very, very snowy out there, isn't it, Eleanor? Goodness. It's pretty, but it's cold and it's hard for the animals to find food. Yesterday, Grandma put some apples out and today they're all gone. I think the deer and the bunnies must have come to eat the apples, too. So that's what we're going to do this winter. We're going to continue feeding the birds and feeding the other animals. Love you, Eleanor. Have a wonderful day. Stay warm. Bye-bye.